All right, we're talking to Megan McMillan. Hey, Megan. Hey. What I want you to do is I want you to tell me what got you into this. What made you want to get on stage and sing your music? Well. Go way back to the beginning. Way back? Yeah. Um, I can remember watching videos of myself because for some reason I like to do that. Um, I was probably three or four, and I was standing on the coffee table in our living room, and I was singing Tom Petty, uh, Free Fallin', but I was saying Tree Fallin', you know. So I think that was the first thing. I always liked to be on stage. I, I did dance lessons. Um, I was a little ballerina. Um, I always like to have people's attention, I guess. So it's an extension so, of you just being a show-off growing it's, up, It's huh? self-expression. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, when did you really know that you can sing? When, when did it occur to you that you could actually do this, that you had a voice? Well, it didn't start with the voice part. It, it really started with writing poems and turning that into songs and wanting to share the songs, so therefore I had to sing. Um, I always like to sit around... Uh, with friends and family, sit around and play the guitar and sing. It's always been fun, but um, I didn't consider it until later on, just because where I come from, there's nobody else that really does that, so I didn't ever consider it an option. Um, so, yeah, I guess about three years ago, I just said, it's now or never, let's just do it. So, doing it. So your songwriting is, you know, came out of your poetry, I yes. take it. Yeah, it just kind of naturally transitioned over. Mm -hmm. Well, who was your, who were your early heroes? What, what, what really got you started? Musical heroes? Yes. Bruce Springsteen, um, a thousand times, because that was my dad's favorite. He was always my dad's favorite, and I grew up listening to every Bruce Springsteen song that's ever been made. And um, my dad can really sing. And he would never sing in front of anybody, but he can really sing. And um, I was kind of like, you know what? That's really cool. I love the way that he put lyrics together. Um, you know, just the, the way that he could tell a story throughout a song just really inspired me. And plus, all the older country people like Loretta Lynn and uh, Merle Haggard, you know, the really good songwriters. So, yeah, I've got a lot of really strange and very different so tell me about about your writing don't do you feel that maybe actual good authentic songwriting is becoming a lost art it's, it's starting to get a little contrived isn't it well I don't think so I think that what you see and hear is um, really watered down and it's very controlled by um, record companies and you know they rule the music world so um, there are extremely talented writers out there and um, just unbelievable poets and artists that you don't hear because there's not really a platform for them to be heard as much as like the mainstream you know radio there is out there. Yeah. So. Well that's one of the reasons we're here. Have, have you encountered any other places that really want the original artists or? Yeah, they're few and far between. They really are. So it's really nice. Um, I love it here because it's encouraged. And like last night, there were a couple of ladies that were here, and I was playing cover songs. I was playing original songs, and they didn't say anything about the cover songs that I did. Um, but they said, we love your original stuff. And that means so much to hear because, um, you know, when you pour your heart and soul into creating a piece of music, um, there's there's nothing better than getting a compliment from that over something else that you've done. So I really appreciated that. We have a uh, we had a conversation last night about your um, you know labeling what it is that you do, what genre, what uh, what kind of subgenre. What so tell tell us again what what do you feel like your music is? I've classified it myself into my own genre of alternative country. Um, and there are other people that classify themselves as alternative country too, but um, there's really no other way that I can, that I think accurately describes my music. Um, I would love to just say country music and that explain it, but it really doesn't anymore because my music's not contemporary country, mainstream. So, um, alternative, yeah. Um, 
Well, I, I feel that it's, it's really authentic, so it should it should be country. Thank you. And the pop should be calling itself alternative. Yeah. You think? Yeah. yeah. Well, there. There you go. Why aren't go. they alternative? Why are they taking it? Because they can they can do whatever they want. They have yeah. the money. Yeah. It's, they have the um, 18 to 22, 23 year old downloads. The power of the dollar. Which there's, I mean, they're making the money, you know, but the, the demographic that they're marketing to, um, they're, they're giving them what they want. And it's not, you know, it's not traditional country. It's, it's different. Country's always, country music has always evolved. Um, the kind of country music that I like the most, which is like the outlaw style country in the 70s and 80s, that was, that was progressive and different back then, you know, so, um. Who am I to say? I just know that my music doesn't fit in the contemporary country genre. So how many original songs do you have right now? Complete? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to lie to you. I really don't know. <laughs> I finished two more today, so um, just average in one a week. So, I mean, ready to record. I have ready to go into the studio and record right now. I have 11 that I feel like are very solid, ready to go. So. Well, there you go. There's there's a CD right there. That's there why I ask. We're really anxious for you to put out a CD. Well, good. Um, I encourage I encourage you to help me find a sponsor. <laughs> All right, what do you listen to when you're at home? I mean, you know, when you're tired of hearing your own voice, and you're tired of hearing the radio, what do you put on when you're at home? Oh, I put on a little um, Brandy Clark. Um, I like Jason Isbell. Um, Sturgill Sampson, Chris Stapleton, Casey Musgraves. Um, I love Miranda Lambert. Um, and of course, I always go back to Bruce Springsteen and Pink Floyd and Metallica. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. A anything that you're you're ashamed that you like that you uh, want to admit to? Ashamed? <laughs> yes, actually. I love the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, I was going to maintain Spice my Girls. composure, but okay. <laughs> no, I, I love it. Any, anytime I hear the Spice Girls stuff, I instantly go back to junior high. Actually, I was in elementary school, so I go back to elementary school okay. and I just jam. <laughs> okay, well, you know, that's that's more cute than it is depressing, so uh, you, you get a pass on that. <laughs> All right, where do you where do you see yourself going with this? What do you want to do? Let's say you were just written a blank check. What do you want to do? I was written a blank check. I would um, just go out on a huge tour, um, take a couple of buddies with me, a couple of songwriter buddies, and we would just go and hit the tour in really hard for a few months, and then I'd come back and establish my own publishing company and be a professional songwriter for the rest of my life, and. Um, Maybe now and then, um, you know, Miranda Lambert or Casey Musgraves or Jennifer Nettles will let me open up for them at a, you know, some arena somewhere. But uh, my main goal is to become a professional songwriter and be respected in that area, and that's what I really want to do. Okay, tell us about your uh, new music video that you've been working on, uh, Rodeo. Tell us about that. Yes. Um, I wrote this song in Nashville with my buddy Mike Music music with a CK. Um, we wrote this song and I actually had written it before. I think a couple of times I started writing it and I threw it away and started over again because I knew the idea I wanted to have for the song but Mike really helped me pull it together. He produced the song. Um, we got awesome musicians from Nas Nashville. Session players came in and knocked it out in, you know, one day. You know, maybe half a day that the musicians were actually there. And, um, it took me a lot longer to put my vocals on than it took them to put it together. They're way more professional than I am. But, uh, <laughs> so, that's Rodeo. It's on iTunes right now. Um, and I shot the video for it in my hometown. And I got my kids in it. I got my band in it. I got my dogs in it. Uh, I got my golf cart in it. Uh, my Al University of Alabama golf cart. And, um... So it's going to be a good time, and it's going to be out within the next couple of weeks. So I want everybody to be looking for it because it's just so much fun. It's ridiculous. Okay, where are we going to see it first? It's going to be on your website? It will be on my website, and it will also be... the. I'm not good with this whole website thing. I do it myself, like I said. I'm not that professional. 
Um, I do have a website, but I would go to my Facebook page because that's where I stay and hang out with everybody. So, um, facebook.com slash Megan McMillan Music. That's where the video for Rodeo will be, and you'll love it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We're glad to have you here. You put on a great show last night. We are looking forward to another one tonight. Thank you going to do anything different? You got any uh, lasers or pyro or... Oh, yeah. You're going to bite the head off of a bat? What are you going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out. I'm going to take my guitar. I'm going to smash it. <laughs> and uh, then I'm going to pick up and play with the pieces. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, everybody. Megan McMillan.